don't you clap your hands and bless the Lord. Let the church say amen. Let the church cry glory. Come on, let the church shout hallelujah on this Palm Sunday. Blessed be the rock of our salvation. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Come on, St. John's. Come on, New Mount Olive, and let's praise God from whom all blessings flow. Won't you stand with me as we sing our doxology? When they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For if there is thy horse is better than a thousand, I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in the house. Lord, I have loved the habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. him. Let the words of my mouth yes. and the meditation of my heart yes. be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Oh, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth, and his name praises. And as we sing praises this morning, I found a friend who is all. I found a friend who is all to me. His love is ever, ever true. I love to tell how he lifted me and what his grace can do for you. Saved by his power divine, saved to new life sublime. Life is sweet and my joy is complete because I'm saved, saved, saved. Without further aligning, let us sing to the honor and glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
Let every heart now pray. O oh, wise eternal God, our Father, we come today. Sound as humble as we know how, God, giving you thanks, honor, glory, and praise for yet this is the day that you have made. Right. And our response collectively, God, is that we're so thankful and so humble to be a part of it. God, now as we stand, we invite the presence of your Holy Spirit into this place. We invite the deliverer into this place. We invite the healer into this place. More importantly, God, we invite the comforter to come into this place. God, we ask right now that you would just have your way in this worship experience like never before. We just want to give you thanks, God, for waking us up this morning. We want to give you thanks for allowing us to assemble ourselves once amongst each other. Dear God, to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Now, God, we just ask, have your way. Have your way, God. Have your way like never before. And we're going to be careful, God, to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. This is our prayer we submit to you now. We give it to you, God, as we give ourselves unto you, as we open our hearts unto you. This is our prayer we submit in the master's name of your dear son, Jesus, who thought it not Robert to hang bleeding down that old rugged cross, but you got up on that third day morning. But God, you didn't stop there because you ascended into heaven and now you sit on the right hand of God making intercessions for each and every one of us here today. Forgive us, God, for any sins that we may have committed by thought, word, or deed. And we'll be careful. We're going to be oh so careful. No, we're not, God. We're going to lose our mind here today praising your holy name because you've been just that good. In Jesus' name we pray. And let the saints say amen. Amen. Now let us put those hands together and give God a hand and clap of praise this morning.
was passing by. Then I decided, oh, to give him a try. Oh, yes, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. was the women day speaker and I couldn't walk up here y'all but today look at today I tried oh I could seem like nothing pop it did be any good pop Heinz did I He was passing by. I needed to be healed and I cried out to Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, touch my body, Lord. Do it again for me, Lord Jesus. For, for I touch the hip of his garment. Come on, choir, and his blood. And his blood. Come on, choir. Come on, audience. Come on, church, low.
come on, for I have touched the hem of his garment, and his blood has made me whole, 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 made me whole. Yeah. Oh, it is Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. And if there are one or two people in this room who can testify that there were moments in your life when you felt broken, hmm. but it was Jesus who made you whole, put the pieces of your heart back together. It was Jesus who made you whole, who mended broken bodies. It was Jesus who made your whole. Won't you just touch your neighbor and say, it was Jesus. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. It was, it was Jesus. It was, it was Jesus. Heart fixer and a mind regulator. It was Jesus. A, a lawyer in the courtroom and a doctor in the sick room. It was Jesus who made made me whole. It was Jesus. This moment we welcome the Reverend Marvett Hines decree to lead us in our morning scripture, followed by another selection from our joint choir of the St. John's and New Mount Olive AME churches, my favorite choirs in the whole wide world. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, nobody but Jesus. I would ask that you would turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter number 12, beginning at the 12th verse, and we will end at the 16th verse. That's John, 12th chapter, 12th verse. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the New International Version reads, the next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. Right. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's coat. And verse 16. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things that had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen.
things family hasn't he done great things well then praise the Lord praise the Lord let the earth hear your voice praise the Lord praise the Lord let the people rejoice anybody got a reason to rejoice today anybody got a reason to be glad today well if you're happy and you know it clap your hands come on if you're happy and you know it clap your hands if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, that God has done great things for you, that God is worthy to be praised, that all day long God is worthy, then let the people rejoice. Let, the, let, let, earth, let earth hear your voice. Let earth hear your hallelujah. Let the people say hallelujah. Amen. Uh, you play that organ like you've been here before. <laughs> amen, amen. Certainly it is good to see each and every one of you all here. Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. It's good to see you, neighbor. Turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I'm glad you're here. Can we give God another hand clap of praise, everybody? Amen. 
Amen, amen. We're getting ready to move into our announcements portion of our worship service. And if you are a visitor here, and I'm, I'm going to put this caveat out right now. If you are a visitor and you're not a member of St. John AME, or if you're, and if you're not a member of New Mount Olive AME, can you just wave your hand in the air? Wave it like you just don't care. All my visitors, amen. St. John, New Mount Olive, can we say hey to everybody? Amen, amen. Man, good to see you, good to see you. If you are watching online and you're not a member of New Mount Olive and you're not a member of St. John AME, please do us this favor and type in the chat box right now where you are watching from. We want to make sure that we connect with all of our visitors in a very real and a very relevant way. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. amen. Moving right along to our announcements, we certainly do want to continue to implore each and every one of us to remember all of our sick and shut-in members that are here at New Mount Olive AME Church and at St. John AME Church in Norfolk, Virginia. Please remember them with a kind card, a social distance visit, a letter, however you choose to do it. But let's continue to remind all of our sick and shut-in and homebound members that they are loved by the South Norfolk community. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen, amen. And speaking of which, you will notice that there is one name missing on Numa Olive's, uh, Numa Olive's sick and shut-in role. And unfortunately, it is with deep uh, regret and sadness that I do inform uh, both congregations of the passing of our dearly beloved brother, uh, Mr. Jose Scott. Um, unfortunately, we all know how much Mr. Jose Scott has meant to Numa Olive AME Church. We know, come on, can I get a witness somebody? Amen, amen. We all know how much you meant to the Tidewater area. When you say the name Jose Scott, that name means something. When you say the name Jose Scott, that name holds some weight. And so, family, we want you to, we want you to be, be uh, just want you to know that we're going to celebrate that life. We're going to celebrate his life this Thursday. Somebody say this Thursday. Celebrate his life this Thursday at 11 a.m. here at New Mount Olive AME Church. We're going to send him off right. Amen. Amen. Speaking of which, I want we need all hands on deck. Somebody say all hands. We need all, you, we need your hands, your neighbor's hands, your neighbor's neighbor's hands, your cousin's hands. We need all hands on deck here at New Mount Olive AME Church to help make this thing go, this, uh, this funeral uh, go well. We also need, if you pass the if you don't mind, if you have any ushers from St. John AME Church in Norfolk, we need some help as well with the ushers. Amen. Amen, amen. It would be, it would be great to be. It would be great to gather, get, gather together once again. Amen, amen. amen. Also, please continue. Uh, please, we also want to say thank you to everybody who supported our Women's Day. Amen. Come on, ladies of New Mount Olive, didn't we have a good time in the Lord? Amen, amen. Come on, Saint John. I saw videos. I saw a little bit of your Women's Day too last week. Can you give yourselves a round of applause? Amen. Saint John had an awesome Women's Day. Come on, somebody. Amen, amen, amen. So we can get the pictures uh, floating across the screen. At New Mount Olive, we had some pictures. And uh, we just want you to see a little bit of all the wonderful things that we had taking place at New Mount Olive. And it was, it was a great time to be had in the Lord. And speaking of which, please don't forget, uh, please don't forget uh, 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 that we're having a Women's Day meeting. All the ladies at New Mount Olive, we're having a Women's Day meeting after church to recap everything that's taking place last week. Amen. Amen. If you're having a birthday in the month of March, can you just do us a favor? All the March birthdays, wave your hand. All right now, all right now, all right now. Praise the Lord. We pray that God wishes you nothing but love, joy, peace, and happiness as you celebrate a whole entire another year of life. Amen. Amen. And please also don't remember, please also don't forget, we, it's annual conference time. Somebody say annual conference. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. That, woo. Sounded a little muddy, Savage. It sounded a little muddy. Let's try it again. Somebody say annual conference. Annual conference. There we go. Y'all sound a little bit more confident about that one. Amen. 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 It's good to be able to celebrate with all of our sister churches in the whole entire Virginia annual conference. And we will do so starting April 24th through April 27th. We are looking for, looking for a good time in the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm praying for God's spirit to show up at annual conference. I'm praying for souls to still get saved at annual conference. I'm praying. Anybody in here praying for annual conference? 
Amen, amen. So we're praying for a good time to be heading the Lord at our annual conference. And we also want to be reminded that our very own Sister Tiffany Jefferson, baby, can you stand up and wave your hand in the air? Come on, she got her hands full, amen. Amen, Sister Tiffany Jefferson, she will be our uh, Women's Missionary Society Night in White Preacher. So we want to make sure we show up in full force so sit for Sister Tiffany Jefferson, amen. Amen, 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 and amen. Also, please don't forget all of the meeting dates and times that are being held here at New Mount Olive AME Church. Stewart Board, we're having our meeting April 6th. That is, uh, that is uh, April 6th at 1 p.m. in person. Trustee Board, you know we're having our meeting April 4th at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. And this is a tentative. Turn to your neighbor and say tentative. A tentative April 20th meeting with Pastor Jefferson. Or April 20th, Pastor's planning meeting. That date is tentative. It's tentative, amen? Amen, amen, amen. amen. The ladies do what we can do. If ladies, if we do what we need to do today after church, amen, we'll, 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 be, able to, we'll, be, able to, uh, uh, we'll be able to change that date up, all right? All right, that's what's up, that's what's up. It gives me great pleasure to turn the service back on over to Pastor Savage so that we can, uh, so that we can embark in the passing out of our palms. And look at these young folk. Don't they, no, no, they look so cute. They look so cute. All right, y'all, don't get too excited just yet because I have some announcements to make for myself. Um, many of which are the same. So we have, St. John's, we have quarterly conference will be this coming Saturday at St. John's. Quarterly conference this coming Saturday at St. John's. Somebody help me, what time is it? 11. At 11 o'clock, thank you, at 11 o'clock. Um, and so please be there on Saturday at St. John's um, for a uh, quarterly conference. The kids are looking at me, so I gotta move real fast. <laughs> Second, I wanna thank everybody for being here. St. John's, thank you for showing up and worshiping this Sunday. Thank you for being here. Because God is still good and God is still worthy to be praised. I want to recognize, trustee board, where are you? Trustee board, come on, won't y'all just stand up? Y'all, don't wave. I want y'all to stand up. Y'all can stand up. Take a bow. St. John's, you have a trustee board. You know, New Mount Olive, don't get offended, but St. John's, your trustee, that's the hardest working trustee board I have ever seen in my, I'm sorry, that I've seen in the past three years of my life. I, I just, I thank y'all because your work really has been heroic. And y'all don't know the half of what this trustee board has been through this week. But because of what they're doing, they've they've had to they've had to they've had to knock some heads, they've had to knock on some doors, but they got the city, they got utilities, they got Dominion Energy, they got they, they got the plumbing company, all in one weekend's time to say they're gonna be at St. John's tomorrow. So we can say we'll be at church at 9:30 on Easter Sunday morning. Let the church say. Amen and amen and praise God. Thank you, trustee board. You may be seated. In St. John's, I'll see you on next Sunday at St. John's. But for this Sunday, New Mount Olive, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you all for giving us a place to come, a place that I know, that I know to be home. And, and it means something. It, it, it really does. It, it, it really does that you all have welcomed us and we are in a family member's house. We're in a family member's house. It's, we're, we're, at, we're at home. And I thank God for you all and for this joint choir, for the way in which you sung, for these two musicians, these leaders in worship and ministry, for working together and showing what can happen when we work together. And so I just want to say thank you, St. John's. Thank you, New Mount Olive. I love you. I love you. And I, and, and this the last, and so I think it's worth all of us joining together in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, we come unto you right now, praying that you would sweep across this sanctuary two congregations standing in the same need, that the Holy Comforter would come and minister to us in this hour, that even as we pass these palms in celebration, of the passion of Jesus Christ. It is our comfort and consolation this holy week that you conquered hell, death, and the grave 
so that we can declare that death no longer has any sting, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen and amen. We come this Sunday, Palm Sunday, to mark the beginning of Holy Week. Yes. Our children come bearing palms in celebration of that which happened almost 2,000 years ago, Jesus' triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem, where the people ripped palm branches off of the trees, and they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, glory to God in the house. We come this day shouting Hosanna. Our children have come bearing the palms. In just a few moments, they will pass them out. Let us pray. Children, won't you just lift the palms in the air? Won't you just lift the palms in the air? Almighty God, we come as your children, still shouting Hosanna to you who are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We pray that just as you rolled into Jerusalem, that you would ride on King Jesus into our hearts, into our minds, and into our souls, that this day we too can celebrate that you are still God, you are still Lord, and you are still King. As we bless the palms, I pray that you would bless the children that hold them. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen, amen. We welcome the choir to lead us in song as our children pass the palm. Now that our children have passed out the palms, we want to encourage each and every one of you all to join in and sing with us as we celebrate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. This is your time now to wave your palms. Let's get to the first verse, everyone. First verse, verse number one. Come on, or all the way. Or all the way through palms and blossoms are strewn, are strewn this day in festival. Where Jesus comes. Where Jesus comes to wipe our tears away. Come on, even now. Even now the throng to welcome his 
Everybody, let's join, sing. Join, sing. His name divine. Let every voice resound with united acclamation. Hosanna. Praise be the Lord. Bless him who come to bring us salvation. Chorus one more time, everybody join sing, join sing his name. Come on, every heart brings out with united acclamation. You gotta get a video of this. Praise me, praise me, the Lord. Bless him who coming to bring us salvation. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. It's offering time. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord. It's offering time. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, we shall. The practice of this house is that uh, offerings are collected electronically during the service times. So if you're a member of New Mount Olive, I encourage you at this time to take out your electronic devices and give via the church website, Cash App, and Givelify. Cash App is New MT Olive. New MT Olive and Givelify. You can search for New Mount Olive AMB Church here in Chesapeake, Virginia. If you're a member of St. John's, you can give via Cash App, and that is the St. John's A-M-E Norfolk S-T, J-O-H-N-S A-M-E Norfolk on Cash App, and you can also give via Givelify uh, by searching for St. John's A-M-E Church in Norfolk, Virginia. If you would like to give a physical donation at the conclusion of the service, uh, the officers of New Mount Olive will be standing here at the center doors the center doors, the officers of New Mount Olive will be standing here at the center door. If you're a member of St. John's, our officers will be standing at this door to my left, your right. And so if you'd like to give a physical donation, you can give to both churches uh, at the conclusion of this worship service. If you have your offering, won't you just take it out, your electronic device, just take it out right now. New Mount Olive, you may remember this and raise it in the air and declare with me, this is my offering. Is my offering. I give it because give it because God gave it to me. I lift it because God lifted me. I smile because God smiled on me. Let the church say amen. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own. Have we given thee?
Let me through the darkness thy face to see all lead me oh Lord lead me come on choir let's just say this
once was lost in sin, but Jesus, this is my Papa. got a yes in their soul today? Come on, anybody got a yes in their hearts today? Anybody got a yes in their minds today? Come on, well, you want to let God know. Somebody ought to say, yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say, yes, Lord. Open your heart and say, yes, Lord. My, 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 my. I'm so glad that when I was once lost in sin, Jesus took me in. Didn't say no to me, but said yes anyway. Regardless of the sin that I was in, he still said yes to me. No matter what I had going on in my life, he still said yes to me. And check it out, even in the midst of the sin that I may still be in right now, he still says, yes, I'll forgive you. Yes, I'll restore you. Yes, I'll redeem you. Yes, I'll give you grace. Yes, I'll give you mercy for morning by morning. New mercies. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Let's go to God for a word of prayer. God, today we say thank you, Lord, for this moment, for this time, for this opportunity, for this place, for this station. We say thank you, God. As a matter of fact, God, we say thank you because the spirit of yes was in this place today, God. Even before we opened these doors up of the church, even before the two churches got together, God, the spirit of yes was already in this place, God. And so we say thank you, Lord, for now we are worshiping in the response of the yes. We say thank you, God, because now we get a foretaste of glory divine since we said yes. And so, God, now we are asking in the midst of this moment right now that you will answer our request and say yes in this moment. That spirit, you will have your way. Preach through me, God, and use me. For I am an open and willing and able vessel in what you are going to do in this moment right now. I've already said yes. So, God, I pray that through my yes, you bring your glory into the midst of our souls. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. And amen. 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 Certainly it is good to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. Boy, I tell you, can we just get, can St. John and New Mount, can y'all give yourselves a round of applause today. Amen. 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 Certainly, certainly when Pastor Savage called me, he said, Reverend, I'm in a little, little dilemma. I need to know if we can come and worship together and do a joint Palm Sunday service. I said, boy, you didn't have to ask that. All you had to do was let me know when. And I would have said yes. And so we say, I say, I give God praise, glory, and honor for my brother, my good friend, Pastor Savage. Yes. Hey, okay, boy, St. John knew my honor. Can we give God a hand clap of praise for Pastor Savage? Amen, amen. Amen, amen. You know, Savage, at one point in time, we used to lay this claim that we, was, uh, we were the youngest pastors in the Virginia Annual Conference. And we were so young, we still could have been YPD members. <laughs> Look at us now. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> amen, amen. Look at us now. Got our own families, got children together. I tell you, it is, it is a blessing. My, 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 how time has flown by. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Amen, amen. Family, uh, there is a word from the Lord on today. Before I do that, can we just recognize our musicians today? Amen. Come on. Come on, y'all. Two giants in the city of Tidewater. I mean, you can't go anywhere without saying the name Chuck Olds and everybody's. I know Chuck Olds. I know Chuck Olds. You can't go anywhere without somebody talking about Mr. James Earls. Everybody knows James Earls. Can we just give God a praise for these two musicians? Amen. And can we get, what can we say about this choir? Right. Yeah. 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 Amen, amen, amen. Sister Copeland, it's good to have some extra sopranos up there. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. That's a, that's a, let that be a reminder to you that God will answer prayer. Can I get a witness, somebody? Amen, amen. Family, there is a Lord. What's up, y'all? Amen. Family, there's a word from the Lord on today. If you would turn with me in your Bibles to a very odd text for Palm Sunday, but it still fits our, our, our theme today. So turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Psalms, Psalms 118. The book of Psalms, Psalms 118. This psalm contains many of our favorite verses. But one verse that I believe is, has grown to become my favorite. Psalm 118, we're going to look at one verse today, verse 25. Psalm 118, verse 25. Amen, amen. Amen. I see you know, with all, Mr. all this technology we got going on, it's good to hear some pages turning. All right. Amen, amen, amen. I tell you one thing, my favorite preacher, Howard John Wesley, always says, that you show me a saint with a Bible that's falling apart. And I'll show you a saint that ain't. And I see some folk getting some highlighters out, got some post-it notes on their Bible. I saw the cover coming off on somebody's Bible. But you know what I don't see? I don't see you falling apart. And so we give God praise for that. Amen. Psalm 118, verse 25. And it reads as such. It says, save us, Lord. We beseech you. Oh, Lord, we beseech you. Give us success. Family, if you would pray with me for a few moments, we're going to preach on the sermon topic of a psalm of salvation. A psalm of salvation. Uh, this particular psalm uh, is one that grew, that, that, that the great Protestant theologian Martin Luther held near and dear to his heart. For about six months in the year 1530, Martin Luther was in Augsburg, Germany. He was there in somewhat of an isolation due to the fact that he was an outlaw and the German officials were trying to figure out what to do about the evangelical religion in Germany. Yeah. Not only was that going on in his life, Martin Luther also found out that his mother took ill. With everything going on in his life, he took time out to write a letter encouraging his mother in her moment of need. In that letter, he wrote these words. He says, Dear Mother, you also know the true center and foundation of your salvation, from whom you are to seek comfort in this and all troubles, namely Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. 
He will not waver or fail us. He will not allow us to sink nor perish, for he is the Savior. Martin Luther wrote these words to help his mother gain some hope in the midst of her despair, to remind her that there is a Savior who will come to her rescue whenever she calls. And Martin Luther's mother needed to hear these words, and we need to hear them as well. Because with all of the events that we've had happen in our lives, we need to be reminded that no matter what we face in our lives, there is a Savior that will come to our rescue. Yeah. With as much bad news as we've gotten this week, we need to hear the good news of a Savior that will come rescue us. I mean, that's really what Palm Sunday is all about. It's the assurance of hope that we have a Savior that will come bringing the salvation. And that's what people did when Jesus rode into Jerusalem. When they saw Jesus coming and riding on a donkey, they shouted these words, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When they are saying these words, they are quoting this psalm, Psalm 118, verse 25 through 26. This psalm being a psalm of victory and a psalm of assurance of salvation. And family, just like the people shouting out Hosanna towards Jesus needed the assurance of victory and salvation, we need assurance of victory and salvation as well. Because just this week alone, so many of us have felt defeated. Just this week alone, we've been through some tough times. Just this week alone, we've been through some rough times. Just this week alone, we've had some difficult dilemmas. Just this week alone, we've had to make some, some tough decisions. Y'all, it's been a trying week, family. It's been a heavy week. It's been a hard week. It's been a disappointing week. But can I be real with you? That's not the conclusion of our week. You've endured everything that you've had to endure, made it through the storms of this week, and you will make it through the storm of next week because you have a Savior. You've got the assurance of a Savior, which means you've got the assurance of victory. And if you just tiptoe through the text with me, you'll find out why the Hebrew people quoted this text as an assurance of victory and salvation. So this text is a text of assurance and victory and salvation because it points to an interjecting Savior. Peep the text, y'all. It says, save us, we beseech you, O Lord. This is an interesting place to put this request because it seems to be out of place. If you look before this request and if you look after this request, you will find that this particular request has nothing to do with the subject matter. Let me prove it to you. In verses 21 through 24, the psalmist says these things such as the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief's cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Then if you look at the, look at the verses 26 through uh, 26, you will find that the psalm writer says, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. And he has given us life by, by the festival, for a, a, a festival procession with branches up to the horns on the altar. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. And in the middle of that, you get this interjection that says, save us. We beseech thee, O oh Lord. Lord, grant us success. Yeah. And I wondered, why come the songwriter put this and interjected this request in the middle of these verses? And I believe that the psalmist knew something about life that we all need to know as well, is that no matter how smooth or how much sense things tend to make in your life, there will be always something out of place that interjects itself into its life. <laughs> There will always be a hard time that interjects itself into your life. There will always be a struggle that interjects itself into your life. There will always be some bad news that will interject itself into your life. I mean, some of us here today were praising God with everything that we had last Sunday. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, something got out.
out of place. I mean, you were driving to work Monday morning, and then all of a sudden, something that you thought was stable in your life ended up getting out of place. You were minding your own business, living your blessed life, and then all of a sudden, something came out of place. You, 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 you ever been there, family? Dealing with something that was out of place? Didn't make much sense? Couldn't wrap your head around why it is happening to you? Couldn't understand how this bad time could interject itself in the midst of your good time? Couldn't understand how this situation could just force its way on in? You ever been there, family? Can I be real with you today? When you're in the midst of a situation like that, it's good to know that all you got to do is interject your request and God will give you a savior to help you out. Well, I wish I could get an amen on that one right there. All you got to do is interject it and say, save us and God will come running. All you got to do is interject in the midst of your trials and your calamities and say, save us and God will take care of you. If you don't believe me, let me prove it to you. It was in the text, y'all. The reason why we can, we can confidently interject the way the psalm writer did is because you don't make a request like this to someone that you are not confident in their abilities for. In other words, I don't ask you for help if I don't think you can help. I don't ask anyone to save if I don't think they can save me. So if I'm unable, if I'm unable to do it, and I'm confident in that other person's ability to do it, then you know what I'm going to do? Ask the other person to do it. And this songwriter interjects this request for salvation because they are confident that they have a savior that will help them in the time of their distress. If you don't believe me, go to verse number five. It says, out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me. Oh, that ought to put a praise right there. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord, and the Lord answered me. But the good news is that the God didn't just leave it at an answer. Is that when I called on God, God set me in a broad place. In other words, when hard and stressful times came and were interjected into my life, all I had to do was interject my Savior, interject my request, interject my prayers, interject my save us, and the Savior came running and interjected itself all the way on the inside of his life. And do I have anybody in here that knows that Jesus interjected himself in the midst of our troubles? Do I have anybody in here that can testify this week that if it had had not been Jesus who stepped on in, in the midst of my situation, do I have anybody in here that can testify and say that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, who stepped with me, who walked with me, who put him, who, who stepped in the doctor's in the doctor's office, who came with me and drove with me, who, who deposited that check with me, who was right there with me by my side, I don't know where I would be. As a matter of fact, I got good news for you. If you call on the Savior, he will save you. If you call on him, he will interject himself in the midst of your situation. If you call on him, he won't leave your own red, but he'll step right on in and reply back with the word and some action to make sure that everything will be all right. Matter of fact, that's really what we oftentimes, this day really centers around one particular word that, that, that was shouted, that, that's been shouted out. That word is called Hosanna. Let the church say Hosanna. Hosanna. This word Hosanna really is a word that is an interjection. It is a one word interjection that is in the Hebrew language and it is literally an interjection for a plea of salvation. So Hosanna really isn't just a word for celebration. Hosanna is a plea for the Savior to interject himself into your situation. So the next time you got something hard in your life, just shout Hosanna and watch your Savior show up. When you're in a distressful situation, holler out Hosanna and watch Jesus come in. When the bottom has dropped in your life, holler out Hosanna. When you don't know what to do, you can confidently call and say Hosanna and watch your Savior come running after you. Somebody ought to practice right now. Throw your head back and say Hosanna. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But check it though. Because Hosanna doesn't, isn't just something that implies for our own individual needs. Hosanna is something that is also implied for the collective salvation as well. In other words, Hosanna isn't just to save me. Hosanna is also to save us. Mm, I like that. Oh, come on, come. you're here now. Come on in with me. Listen, so if you break the word Hosanna down, the root word of the Hosanna is the verb to save. Then you also had the last part of the last part of the word, which literally means to either save now or it could mean to save us. It just depends on how you choose to use the verbiage and the subject matter in the sentence. And so here, the psalmist is using this, whole, this word Hosanna to tell us that we need God to save us now. Not just save me now, but save us now. And that's good in here today because all of us, because many of us came to church today and you don't know what your neighbor was dealing with. You don't know what your neighbor had to put up with this week. You don't know the hell that your neighbor had to go through this morning. You don't even know what it took for your neighbor to make it to church today. You don't even know if your neighbor had the electricity cut off last night. You don't even know if there was no hot water or no cold water in the building. You don't even know if the water was running in the building last night. All you need to know, you came here today with one night on one accord to say the word Hosanna, which will help take care of your situation and your neighbor neighbor situation. Can you do me a favor for the first time in service today? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I don't know what you got going on, but Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. I don't know what you're going through, but Hosanna. I don't know what it took, but Hosanna. I don't know what you've been through, but Hosanna. Somebody say, Hosanna! We, we ain't done yet. We ain't done yet. Look, 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 y'all. Hosanna is a Hebrew word that is used as an interjecting plea for immediate. Sorry, that's, that's a little slang. Because immediate is faster than immediate. Yes, yes, yes. But it's immediate salvation for both the individual and the collective. In other words, Hosanna isn't just about, it isn't just an interjection for our needs. It is an interjection for our community's needs as well. Peep the text, y'all. The psalmist does something that translates very well into the, into the English language. He doesn't write, save me. He writes, save us. The type of salvation that the psalmist is writing about isn't just for one person. Because yes. if it were so, the psalmist would have said, save me. But the psalmist wrote, save us. And that means the psalmist wanted the whole community to be able to experience a level of liberation that is indefinite. The psalmist didn't only plead for a savior who would just benefit himself. Yes. Rather, the psalmist wrote, save us. Yes. As a plea to say that salvation is just as much communal as it is individual. We're saved so someone else can be saved. We're free so someone else can be free. We have the assurance of victory so, so that someone else can have the assurance of victory. Our interjection of Hosanna is as much communal as it is individual. And that's why I love the fact that we're worshiping together right now. Because when one church needed another church, all we had to do was say Hosanna. And look at what God done done. Look at how God brought us together. Look at how God kept us. Look at how God was with us. Look at how God is keeping us. Come on now. Come on. Can we just give God a hand clap of praise for the fact that God was bringing us together? And you know what? Mr. Earls, that's what's wrong with society right now. So many people are so individual minded. So many people don't have a mindset about their community. So many people don't even care to open up their own doors of the church. So many people wouldn't even wouldn't even bother to be or wouldn't even bother to be to be concerned with the with the issues of their own neighbor. It's just as long as I came to church, as long as I got my blessing, as long as I got my worship, as long as I heard my song, then I will be okay. But what about your neighbor? Because Hosanna ain't just about you. 
Hosanna is also about your neighbor too. We treat salvation as if it is exclusive when it's really inclusive. We treat salvation as if it is exclusive to those who look like us, believe like us, live like us, in the same test bracket as us, love like us, have the same gender as us. And the problem is, is that's not how salvation works. Salvation is not homogeneous. Salvation is not being of the same kind or alike. Salvation is for everybody. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what you got going on, all you got to do is call and you'll have access to the Savior. Salvation is for everybody. And the type of Savior that is being called upon in this text is the kind of Savior that, can, that cares about your needs as well as mine and can save you while saving me at the same time. The kind of Savior that is called upon at this text has enough grace in his left hand and enough mercy in his right hand to pick you up and to keep me standing up. The kind of Savior that is called upon in this text is the kind of Savior that will lead you and guide me. Can I get a witness and hear somebody and can some Somebody say, I've got Hosanna for everybody. Now, now, not only did the Hebrew people quote this text as an assurance of victory and salvation, not only did they quote this text for salvation for their community, they also quoted this text for prosperity. Let the church say prosperity. prosperity. Peep the text, y'all. It says, Hosanna, or save us. We beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. The psalm writer writes, grant us success. The psalmist is writing this and addresses the Savior asking for success, almost like a plea for prosperity. And it's interesting that the writer does this because at the time of this text, the Israelite people are already in prosperous times. So the success that the psalm writer is talking about isn't just materialistic success. Rather, it is a success that sees the favor of God in their lives. They are looking for God's favor to be upon them over their lives and every aspect of their lives. And at the time of this text, the Israelite people are already experiencing prosperity in their kingdom. However, the psalmist is writing this plea to ask for the favor of God to be over not just their own individual lives, but to be over the community's life as well. And beloved, during these times, we need to ask for God's favor over our own individual lives. We also need to ask for God's favor in our neighbor's lives. We need to ask for God's favor to be into our own households. We need to ask for God's favor to rest upon our jobs. We need to ask for God's favor to rest upon the whole entire area that we live in. We need to, we need to ask for God's favor to rest in our church and to rest in our families and to rest in our neighbor's families and in our neighbor's churches. We need the hand of God to be over every area of our lives. And I don't know about you, ah, but I, I want God's hand over every area of my life. Because <laughs> I want God's hand over my home. I, I want God's hand over my children. <laughs> and I want God's hand over my family's children. I want God's hand over my friend's children. I want God's hand over my neighbor's children. I, I want God's hand over New Mount Olive. <laughs> and I sure enough want God's hand over St. John Norfolk as well. I want God's hand in my face. <laughs> I want God's hand in Savage's face. I, I want God's hand in my neighbor's face. I, and I want God's hand in my other neighbor's face too. Uh, if you know it, say yes. Because uh, I know that I need God uh, to not just be in my life. Uh, but I need God's hand in my neighbor's life too. Because uh, this salvation... Uh, and this favor isn't just going to be for me. Because if I'm going to get it, my neighbor's going to get it too. If my prayer's getting answered, my neighbor's prayer's getting answered too. If Jesus coming into my life, I'm going to make sure that he's coming into my friend's life too. If you know it, say yes. Say yes. And I know that we typically tend to shout over cars, clothes, and land. But I want to give God praise for how God God is keeping me, my friends, and my family, and my family's friends in the palm of God's hands. Can I get a witness, somebody? That's why when I come to church this Palm Sunday, I don't just link my Palm Sunday praise for my individual needs.
needs, but I'm going to link my Palm Sunday praise for my neighbor's needs too. That's why I lift up my hands. That's why I choose to do my dance, because sometimes it's not the fact that I need the prayer answered. Sometimes it's the fact that my neighbor needs their prayer answered too. Can I get a witness, somebody? And I know that many of us like to shout for our own individual needs but can you do me a favor for the last time today link up with a sister or a brother beside you and say neighbor oh neighbor I got to thank God for what God's going to do in your life I thank God for how Hosanna saved your soul I thank God for how Hosanna made you whole I thank for how Hosanna will restore your church and keep our church. I thank God for how Hosanna will turn a bad situation and make it all right. I thank God for how Hosanna was up in your doctor's report because I know what Hosanna did for my doctor's report. I thank God for how Hosanna helped you get right and how Hosanna is keeping me right. If you know it, say yes, say yes. And I'm on my way back home. I'm about to go sit on down. But excuse me, but I'm a little excited today. Because it's not often that two great churches get to worship together in spirit and in truth. And I can believe in my sanctified imagination that the psalm writer was saying these things. And then it translated all the way over to John and Jesus in the New Testament. Because I believe that the psalm writer was able to see through 40 and two generations. Saw a virgin named Mary. Saw her son and saw how her son would perform miracle after miracle. Not just for his benefit, but for the neighbor's benefit too. If you know it, say yes. I'm sure that the psalm writer had a glimpse in the future and saw a man named Jesus who the Jews would celebrate on this day and they will quote this very psalm they will lay down lay down their palms in the front of his feet and shout Hosanna Hosanna and this man when Hosanna was called would come and save us not the way that we would expect but in the way that brought about peace and salvation not the way that we would have expected but a way that doesn't bring about condemnation and this man this man named Jesus that saved our souls decided to save our souls riding on a donkey riding in on peace because he knew that we all needed peace I need peace in my family peace in my workplace peace in my situation peace in my soul Peace in this world, peace to this day, peace for tomorrow, peace for the next day, peace for the next day, and the day after that. For I heard an old preacher say that if you choose Jesus and you let him in your heart, if you choose Jesus and you ask him to save your soul, that each day will get better. Because every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. And I write about it. And that's why I believe the day that when we got together, that's why I believe today that when we chose to worship together, that God decided to answer some of our prayers. And I believe that because we said, Hosanna, God came in and saved us. God came in and helped us. God came in and graced us. If you know it, say yes. Amen. Amen. Come on, stand up all over the church, everybody. If you call on Hosanna, God will come save you. He will come running. Call on Hosanna. Hosanna. He will come take care of you Hosanna. and your neighbor too. 
Amen. If you call Hosanna, God will make sure that everything will turn out all right for you, your neighbor, your children, your family, your Amen. neighbor's family, for every single person yeah, that's attached to you. Right. If you call on Hosanna, God will make sure that salvation will come to each and every one of you Amen. all today. And that's what I got news for you today. Amen. If you call on Jesus, he'll come running. Yeah. He'll come saving your soul. He'll come with the intentions of making you whole. All you've got to Amen. do is call on Jesus. Call As a matter of fact, that's what this moment is right now. Call this it. moment right now is a time for you to come get saved and call on Jesus. Call on this Jesus. This is your time right now. Don't let it pass you by. Yeah. If you feel that nudging on your heart right now, you want to run down to this altar and give me your hand, but give God your heart. For right now, salvation is here. Hosanna yeah. is here. An opportunity to be saved is here. A chance to get favor is here. A chance to gain peace is here. All you've got to do is come. come. Give me your hand. Come. But give God your heart. Yes. As the choir sings. That's not your call today. Why don't you come and come join these great Ark of Zions? Two wonderful churches here. St. John A. and Church. I see Pastor Savage. Come on, Pastor Savage. Come on. If there's any new member that wants to be received to St. John A. and Church in Norfolk, Virginia, that's a great place for you to join. And if you're on the south side of Chesapeake and you want to be a part of New Mount Olive A. and Church, why don't you come? All you got to do is come and give us come, your hand come, come. and give God Amen. your heart.
Let the church say amen. amen. For thine is the kingdom Hallelujah. and the power Hallelujah. and the glory. Hallelujah. For thine is the kingdom Hallelujah. and the power Hallelujah. and the glory. For thine is the kingdom Hallelujah. and the power Hallelujah. and the glory. Hallelujah. For thine is the kingdom Hallelujah. and the power and the glory Hallelujah. forever Hallelujah. and ever Amen. and ever Amen. and ever and ever Hallelujah. and ever Hallelujah. and ever Hallelujah. and ever Before we leave this place, Hallelujah. I would ask if there's anybody in need of special prayer. And, and Reverend Jefferson, I admit I'm taking advantage of the situation. But if there's anyone in need of special prayer, and I include the entire trustee board and steward board of St. John's Church, Hallelujah. while we have one before us, won't you just meet me? at the altar. Won't you just Hallelujah. meet us at the altar? Hallelujah. And if there's Hallelujah. anyone else who needs prayer Hallelujah. like these groups, Hallelujah. about Hallelujah. that name. Hmm. Oh, Master. Master. Oh, Savior. Savior. What's his name? Jesus, the fragrance after, after the rain. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, his name. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Let all heaven. Shall all pass away, but there's something about Almighty God, we come before you right now. 
believing that there is something about the name of Jesus that causes demons to tremble. There's something about the name of Jesus that can run sickness from our bodies. There's something about the name of Jesus that can soothe our doubts and calm our fears. There's something about the name of Jesus. So right now we come calling on the name of Jesus. Just a few of your children gathered around an altar, believing that we can cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. Believing that there are some of us who've been holding heavy burdens, been holding heavy burdens, been holding heavy burdens, holding heavy burdens, and we feel the weight of our, those burdens not only on our bodies, but in our mind and in our souls. We know what it means to feel weak, to feel worn and feel weary, but we call on the name of Jesus. Because I opened the Bible one day and read letters. It said, come on me all ye who are weak and heavy laden and I will give you rest. I read somewhere where it said we can cast our burdens upon you. A songwriter said, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Don't you trust it? Oh, trust it, never doubt. For he will surely bring you out. God, we come before you right now declaring that we trust in you. There's someone who's sick among us. Lord, I know some names. I can say it right now who need you to heal them from cancer in their bodies. Lord, we trust in you. There's someone maybe around this altar that's praying for themselves or, or for somebody else with diabetes in their bodies. Lord, we trust in you. Lord, we come right now praying for those who for themselves or someone else are thinking about all timers and dementia. Lord, we, we trust in you. There's somebody right now praying for a court date that's coming out. Lord, uh, we trust in you. Somebody right now thinking about a bill that's due on the first of the month. Lord, we trust in you. And I, I don't know what the need is. I don't know what the one is. Uh, but I know if we shout out together with a loud voice, Hosanna that you can save us, uh, that you can heal us, uh, that you can deliver us, uh, that you can meet us, uh, that you can pick us up and, and turn us around and, and place our feet on solid ground. Lord, we trust in you. Lord, we trust in you. And we, we get up from this altar, I pray that we'll feel a little bit lighter. When we leave this altar, I, I pray that we will be able to run on and see what the end will be. When we leave this altar, I pray that we can leave our burdens here and go back home and, and go back to work and, and go to the doctors this week and, and go in and out of wherever we're going believing that the name of Jesus still has the power to save, still has the power to save, still has the power to save, still has the power to save. Still has the power to save. Hosanna, Hosanna. Praise be the Lord. In Jesus' name.
should be the rock of my salvation. Amen. Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. And the church says amen, amen, and amen. best week you've ever had in your life. God bless you.